is sleek, stylish, radiant with charisma. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times the best friend character stole the show. Friends of yours? I've never seen them before in my life. For this list, we'll be looking at the most scene-stealing star turns for our favourite best friends in movies. Spoiler warning, we do discuss some ending scenes and key plot points throughout. Which character would you like to hang out with most? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Delilah Abraham. How Stella got her groove back. The best kind of movie bestie is a partner in crime someone who can take the protagonist's mind off their main character drama and help them to have fun instead. Whoopi Goldberg shows us how it's done in this cult 90s classic. Go on now, come on, here we go. I'm running, girl, like to win. I'm running. Come on, look at me, go. you can do it. I'm gluing it. Come on, girl. Right now, look at me run. All right. I'm fast like a mofo. Her character, Delilah Abraham, is sunshine in human form. Smart, funny, and just a little bit naughty, she encourages her uptight friend Stella Payne to fly out to Jamaica for a bit of rest, relaxation, and romance. Well, come on, girl. <laughs> Ooh, you look so fly. Donna. I know you think you're cute with your new brain. Oh, yeah. You like them? I love them. They make you look entirely too damn young. As a firm friend and the life and soul of the party, Delilah fits the image of a rom com sidekick. But she's so much more than that. Goldberg steals every scene she's in, deftly handling tragedy and pathos, as well as providing most of the laughs. That boy wasn't looking at you like he was old enough to be his mother girl. Look, Stella, we are in Jamaica, girl. We are in Jamaica. I'm have here. an affair, have oh. a fling. Number 9. Sanford Sandy Lyle. Along came Polly. Before he became an Oscar winner and habitual awards nominee, the late Philip Seymour Hoffman was best known for his quirky side characters. Yeah, we have to leave now. Well, no, can we stay a couple more minutes? But dude, no. This is serious. I just sharted. Sandy Lyle might not be the most highbrow role he ever tackled, but it's our favorite. As the obnoxious but lovable best friend of the protagonist, Sandy stands out from the crowd. Don't you try to think ahead. Uh, Sandy? Save tomorrow for tomorrow. Think about today instead. Whether he's making bizarre little speeches, trying to recapture his teen idol glory days, or just falling over a lot, he's magnetic on screen, with some great comic timing and a surprising gift for slapstick. Hoffman turns a B-movie buddy role into a star vehicle. Let's not bullcrap each other. On paper, Van Loo is one of the riskiest sons of bitches alive. But people, we cannot sum up a man's life with a bunch of numbers on a computer screen. Number 8. Cynthia, Working Girl Joan Cusack has been serving comedy gold in character roles for decades now. From Geek Girl number 1 in 16 Candles to School of Rock's Principal Mullins. Make an exception on what I'm pushing on. Ooh, baby, ooh, Tomorrow. In Working Girl, Cusack plays the best friend of Melanie Griffiths, Tess McGill. A Staten Island native with a big personality and even bigger hair, Sin's look is so 80s it hurts. Uh, Mr. Jack Trainer to see you, Miss McGill. Thank you, Cynthia. Hold all calls, Miss McGill. Yes, Cynthia, thank you. Can I get you anything, Mr. Trainer? Coffee, tea, me? Matching your earrings to your eyeshadow shade? That's real dedication. Cynthia might not have the same ambitions as her friend, but she always has her bag. And just like Tess, she's not to be underestimated. Sim. Sometimes I see you dance around the house in my underwear. Doesn't make me Madonna. Never will. She's level-headed when it counts, but it's her sense of fun that makes her the best thing about this movie. Number 7. Spike, Notting Hill the term best friend is maybe pushing it, but William Thacker's inappropriate and eccentric flatmate is undoubtedly one of the highlights of Notting Hill. Vicious circle. Yeah. And, and I was like rooting around in your things, and I found this, and I thought, cool. Kind of spacey. 
Reese Ifans is a real chameleon of an actor, always disappearing into each role he plays, but he's really just unforgettable as Spike. Hi. Just check in. Thank you, God. This comedy character is an oddball, an exhibitionist, and a nightmare roomie, but also strangely charming. At the beginning of the film, he is just an irritant to Hugh Grant's hero, but by the end, he's one of the gang. I was called when I came, was I? Williams just turned down Anna Scott. You daft. Spike might be a small part, but Ethan's comic timing and deadpan delivery hit every funny beat in Richard Curtis's script. Number six, Paulette Bonafonte, Legally Blonde. Tell him, Paulette. <laughs> I'm taking the dog, dumbass. A California sorority girl and a 30-year-old manicurist from Massachusetts might seem like an odd BFF pair, but somehow Elle and Paulette just make sense. When the law student drops into a local salon, she's in need of a friend, and Paulette's sympathetic ear and girly energy is the perfect tonic. Well, if a girl like you can't hold on to her man, then there sure as hell isn't any hope for the rest of us. This fledgling friendship works both ways, as Elle's gentle encouragement helps Paulette stand up to her ex and make a move on that guy she has a crush on. Paulette is such a lovable character, and Jennifer Coolidge brings her to vibrant life. She could easily be turned into a joke, but the script and Coolidge's portrayal allow the beautician to be kind and vulnerable, as well as seen stealingly funny. Just like everybody else. Turns out I am a joke. No, oh, you're not a joke. Number five, Jude, Shazza, and Tom. Bridget Jones's Diary. Bridget Jones might jam out to All By Myself, but when the going gets tough, this singleton's fabulous friend family are always there to cheer her up. To Bridget, who cannot cook, but who we love, just as she is. Whatever the crisis, they're ready with a bottle of wine and a heartening feminist rant. And they loved her just the way she is. Well, before Mark came along. There goes my invite to the Darcy's next year. If he didn't leap over the family heirlooms and whip you up in his arms, then sod it. Yes, he's clearly the most dreadful cold fish. Exactly. Jude, Shazza and Tom are all chaotic in their own way. But when the gang get together, laughing about their problems becomes easy. Their combined charisma and joyous energy makes you want to spend more time in their company. Have we got the most fantastic surprise for you? No, you're not going to sing. I mean, not that fantastic, sadly, no, but still pretty good. We've decided we're going to take you to Paris for the weekend Hi. so you can forget about everything, particularly forget about Mark Darcy. If Bridget's not going to Paris, can we come instead? Number four, Megan Price, Bridesmaids. <laughs> Jesus, Megan. I'm sorry, I want to apologize. I'm not even confident of which end that came out of. Whitney, back to you, I'm sorry. All about female friendship, bridesmaids could not have picked a better cast of funny women to bring home the message. The titular bridesmaids each steal the show at one time or another, but the most memorable is Melissa McCarthy's Megan. Intense, unsubtle, and gloriously offbeat, Megan makes us laugh from her very first scene. You must be Annie's fella, a play a Megan. It's a pleasure. Oh, and well. he's not, uh, I'm not, he's not, I'm not with him, sorry. Oh. All right. I'm glad he's single because I'm going to climb that like a tree. Comedies don't often factor in the Oscar race, but McCarthy made such an impression that she bagged a Best Supporting Actress gong. The comedian proved that she could play the drama as well as she could the jokes. And one of the film's most pivotal scenes was even partly improvised by the actress. She tried to blow me up. They threw firecrackers at my head. Firecrackers? I mean, literally. I'm not saying that figuratively. I got firecrackers thrown at my head. They called me a freak. Annie might not consider Megan her best best friend, but she's the real heart of the film. Number three, Patricia Fat Amy Hobart. Pitch perfect. A little known actress might be expected to fade into the background in an ensemble movie like Pitch Perfect. However, Rebel Wilson's comedic turn as the self styled Fat Amy propelled her to stardom instead. <laughs> Hear 
The Aussie actress hams it up as our favourite member of the Barden Bellas, balancing slapstick humour with some of the movie's best one-liners. Amy is confident, eccentric, and a show-stopping performer too. As the avowed best friend of Anna Kendrick's Becca, she's loyal and loving but totally without filter. Amy might seem like a loose cannon, but she holds the gang together, and the Bellas wouldn't be the same without her. I'm an open book. I mean, for God's sake, you guys have got me fat, Amy. See, I guess I'm just not really living if I'm not being 100% honest. Number 2. Samwise Gamgee, The Lord of the Rings Franchise Frodo Baggins might be the protagonist of Peter Jackson's epic movie trilogy, but we'd argue that Sam is the real hero. Steady, kind, brave, and loyal, he begins the quest as Frodo's gardener and ends as his fast friend. I made a promise, Mr. Frodo. A promise. Don't you leave him, Samwise Gamgee. And I don't mean to. I don't mean to. Along the way, we discover that he's just the sort of person you'd want at your side in a crisis. Without Sam, the ring would never have reached Mount Doom, and Frodo would never have made it home. Don't you let go. Don't let go. Tolkien said that the character was based on the private soldiers and kit-carrying Batman he knew in the Great War. Sean Astin's portrayal of Sam became the heart and soul of the movies, and he definitely gets some great lines. Once and for all, come on, Mr. Frodo, I can't carry it for you, but I can carry you! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. George Downs – My Best Friend's Wedding If there's one romantic comedy character that hands down ran away with the movie, it's this one. Played with great gusto by Rupert Everett, George is a colleague of Julia Roberts' heroine, who agrees to pose as her boyfriend. I insist you stay on to lunch. Oh, yes. No, 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 absolutely. Love to. <laughs> love the bag, love the shoes, love everything, love to. Thank you. <laughs> Darling, what about your flight? Cancelled. The gay best friend has become an overused movie trope, but George is written like a real person, not a fashion accessory. The character was originally meant to be a small part, but by the final cut, he basically was the movie. Yeah, tell them you're afraid of love, afraid of needing. Needing what? To belong to someone. We will ask for you, huh? I'm sorry about that. Michael who? However much you love Dermot Mulroney, the best friend of the title is basically irrelevant when compared to Everett's comedic charisma. George's inclusion also allows the film to end on a high, turning it into a beautiful tribute to platonic friendship. Maybe there won't be marriage. Maybe there won't be sex. But by God, there'll be dancing. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.